Uh, greeting everyone. I'm Dr. Deependra from Conceptual Orthopedic and I welcome you all in today's connect session with Bishal sir. And today sir is going to discuss, I think one of the uh, difficult to understand is spinal pelvic parameter and why you have to do this spinal pelvic parameter during your total hip replacement surgery. So I think this talk is going to be very interesting and useful to all of you. So without any further delay, I welcome you sir on the board and I request you to start your presentation. Now it's over to you Dr. Bishal sir. Uh, good evening, Dr. Dipendra. Good evening, friends, everyone. Uh, so, am I audible? Uh, yes, sir. It's loud and clear. Fine. Let me share my screen. Uh, yes, sir. We can see your PPT. Okay. All right. Fine. So, uh, uh, today I am talking about one of the most... Uh, a difficult kind of a thing, confusing kind of a thing uh, that is uh, spino pelvic para uh, kinematics. Uh, this is this is the most uh, uh, what do you call it? It's the most uh, difficult part to be understood or comprehended because a lot of things are happening uh, with the uh, what do you call with the uh, uh, parameters. So very difficult to understand, very confusing. So many times you learn, everyone you, you will get a different uh, views, different scenarios. So let us try to understand. And this question has been uh, started to appear in your exams as well. Okay, but not uh, as often as other parts, but this question starts appearing. I'm expecting this question to be a part of your uh, theory or why was somewhere they'll start asking you about this question. Even if you have finished your uh, uh, your uh, MS or DNB, if you're planning for your uh, plastics or any scopy related kind of fellowship programs, this question is, the, I think I'm expecting this question to be as a part of your uh, entrance exam for your fellowships and very, very difficult, very uh, confusing to understand. So without further delay, let us start understanding why this topic is so important. Why this topic suddenly came into vogue and why all these things started important, giving certain importance. It all started in 2015, 2016 when they started noticing this kind of scenario. So why the reason is the risk of THR dislocation and well done THR dislocation, the risk is up to as, eight, as high as 8% with significantly increased instability. Why? Because of spino pelvic motion this pathological spino pelvic motion the risk increases up to 8% the dislocation rate for normal thr or non spino pelvic pathologies is about uh, 0.3 to 0.5% okay whereas with pathological spining the risk increases significantly as much as 8% and another important finding is Whenever you see a chronically uh, a degenerative hip, I, it, the, the degenerative hip can be for many reasons, right? It can be traumatic, it can be idiopathic, it can be uh, remote arthritis, it can be ankylosing spondylitis or anything. Most of the times that hip is always associated with spine pathology. Live about a normal degenerative hip. I'm speaking, speaking about, a, for example, post parthis sequelae or a Tom Smith arthritis. The patient must have had that arthritis or tuberculosis somewhere when the child, he was in a child toddler group. But when the patient you have planned for surgery, THI, they are easily about third or fourth decade of their life, right? So over a period of 30, 40 years, there develops a degeneration. That degeneration coexists with your hip, spine and hip, the degeneration coexists. And this degeneration is up to 3.5%. Imagine what? The result is somewhere about 25 to 27% increase in the risk of your hip going for dislocation. A well done THR, a well placed cup, a well placed stem can still go for dislocation. That is the reason this topic has been gained a lot of uh, importance in recent times. So let us understand each one by step by step. Very simple. I made it very simple. Okay. Let us understand few steps. First step, okay, we make it a call it as an anterior pelvic plane. Okay, we call it as an anterior pelvic plane. Simple, what, what is anterior pelvic plane? Okay, this view is a lateral view, right? 
this we were lateral view how do we draw a anterior pelvic plane we have to draw three or four parameters okay we are supposed to draw three or four parameters let us draw one parameter that is anterior pelvic plane anterior pelvic plane in the sense where what is the most anterior part of your pelvis can anyone tell me what is the most anterior most part of your pelvis it is ASS, right? What is the most anterior part of the lower pelvis? It is your symphysis pubis. When you jaw, jo join a line between the two midpoint of the ASIS and the symphysis pubis, this plane is called as anterior pelvic plane. Any doubts? Okay. This pelvis anterior pelvic plane so how do you make it an anterior pelvic plane first which is the most anterior most structure of our pelvis it is asis okay and which is the most anterior most structure in the lower pelvis it is pubic symphysis when we jaw join a line between these two this is known as anterior pelvic plane understood okay Sym pubic symphysis yes pubic symphysis ps stands for pubic symphysis okay that is your uh, anterior pelvic pain. Next comes is your understand what happens. This pelvic can rotate anteriorly or it can rotate posteriorly. This pelvis can rotate anteriorly or posteriorly. Right? Okay. How, which is the axis of rotation where the pelvis can move up and down? Okay, which is the axis of uh, pelvis, which it can start moving up and down, up and down. This is around your hip joint. Okay, this is your hip joint. This is where your pelvis starts rotating either anteriorly or posteriorly. This, if it tilts posteriorly, we call it posterior pelvic tilt. If it tilts anteriorly, we call it anterior pelvic tilt. Okay, this is fixed. The rotation is happening around your hip joint. Agree? Two things you have to understand anterior pelvic plane and this center of one femur head, center of two second femur head. So we call it as a bifemoral coxa or coxa femora axis. Okay, we have two femurs, coxa is head, that axis is called as bifemoral coxa axis. Okay, along with that, either the pelvis can move up or it can move back. Okay, this is one thing. Now, let what we understood, we understood anterior pelvic plane. Now, let us understand this pelvic tilt. Leave over the spino, just understand pelvic tilt. Pelvic tilt is what? We are learned if it goes anterior, it is anterior pelvic tilt. It goes posterior, it is called posterior pelvic tilt. How do you calculate this pelvic tilt? Again, okay. so we, we to draw angle, we need two lines, right? Line one, line two. Okay. The first point is center of your femur head axis. We draw one point. Second one is S1 vertebra center. We draw one line to this. Other line is perpendicular vertical line, which is passing vertical line from your bicoxis ang angle. This is your pelvic tilt. Okay. Pelvic tilt is what? Pelvic tilt, it indicates how much the pelvis is tilted. Okay. How do you draw this? It is simple. One is between two femur heads, we draw midpoint. Center of your S1 vertebra. Okay draw one line and line per vertical line what this is a vertical axis right it's a vertical axis how much it is tilted backwards or how much it is tilted forward is your pelvic tilt this angle is your pelvic tilt okay this is called a spino pelvic tilt or you can just call it as a pelvic tilt okay this is step two simple step one is assessing the plane second one is drawing pelvic tilt next